Tuesday morning, Dave's here chipping, Rob's over the chip. The dryer now, we've finally got the barley in it up to some sort of spec that we put in the other week. Every time we've had a day where we've had a bit of free electric, we've been giving it a bit of a bit of a polish to try and get the bush away up. Finally got there now. That's obviously spring barley, so we'll probably keep that to one side because it looks like we're going to have a few days of spring barley this year. It is how the wheat's rubbish, so seed will probably be scarce. Just been looking at barley, and Adams has now actually turned up for a load of barley, so Rob's moving that out of the way so we can stop the windows getting mucky with the dryers discharging and then we'll back this wagon up here and load him up. I think I sold nine load for October. So what's left about a week of October. So we'll think there's two today, two tomorrow, three another day, and then we had quite a bit going out last week, so it's just, actually Miles getting quite a bit less. Rob's loading out, another wet, miserable day. But when you see that little smiling face there, watching you out the window, it doesn't matter that the wheat in the field's rotten and um, the weather's rubbish and the bank's empty, does it really? And you've got your health and a smiling face like that. That is why we have 10 metre merlots. Makes the yard bigger when you've got piles up that high. Some of the really wet OSR bales from a few years ago that have been top ones that never had hay caps on. Rob's just taking his strings off and we're blending them with the chip because it's, at the end of the day, it's biofuel. I'm rooting out this fuel bowser because I think I've had it three years and I don't think we've ever used it. And Adam's doing a job next week and needs one, so it's like, do you want to sell it? I was like, well, I may as well, it's been taking up space in the yard. And I've never used it, so I'll get it out now for him. Jenkinsons have just turned up now for chip, just as we shut the chipper down, which is good. Rob's just moving this out the way. Go a bit further if you want. Yeah, all right. Where's the chock? I think I could claim the VAT back on my car because it's got a pickup hitch and I can tow fuel bowsers with it. The irony of towing a diesel bowser with an electric car. It's kind of like people with Teslas towing generators around, I suppose. For four years now. This is Adam. Was it 3650? Adam's 3650. Remember when he started getting it together, taking it apart and kind of forgot where everything went? Well, he's now going to start putting the wheels back on it. Is he going to be ready for Christmas? Probably will be, to be fair, because most of it has actually been done. Dave's just loading the mini dig because he's finished chipping it, and we're going to go up to Wellbrook and sort the driveway out so that we can get the cherry picker in a bit easier. So we're at Wellbrook now, and... What we're going to do is, if you imagine, there's the yard there. So we're going to take a bit of hedge out here so you can go into the house garden there. So you can, if you put gates across there, you can keep the yard separate from the house. So if there's anyone got any horses loose, that gate can stay shut. But then when you come in in the car, you can just pull up inside here. And then you can have a turning spot either side there. So yeah, we'll just rip that out and scrape this off and stone it up. Right, so Dave's going to remove the fence, the hedge. That's where we find out there's chicken wire in the bottom. There is a little bit actually, isn't there? Put the bottom there. Just to make it so we can't put that through the chipper. We've got November the 5th coming up. roll it that way because this way might pull that gate post of it. Should have munched it down with the edge cut to first, shall we? Because it's just like flattened it and then... Could have come in with a flail and took it all out. Yeah, or the mulcher. Yeah. That's going now, isn't it?
If Liv and Hannah were still here, it might have ended up with a gap after a while anyway, might it with them driving in and out with trailers. <laughs> Sometimes when you do that, it whips over and smashes the windows. Yeah, we're going to replant that, can't we? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, this has got a level to go to. Yeah, again, straighten the bucket out of the way. Yeah, you've got the Merlot over here now. There is, isn't there? Yeah, that's going to be a bit of a pain now, isn't it? Well, hopefully, yeah. The posts don't look so clever anyway, to be honest. But round here. That's obviously rusted and cracked bit. It's actually metal, that mesh. So we won't be able to chip it. Unless we chop the bottom off. I think we'll just leave it for bonfire night. It's made the house a lot lighter already, that garden, because it's quite it's quite tall really for how far away it is from the house. Luckily we had some snips in the tractor. I'm saying that the builders have probably got some, we just cut this wire out now. Take it out to there then. Strip this. What oh, sunk there? Is that a drain? Well, um, dig it out, stone it up, and then probably put some that golden gravel on it, perhaps. It's actually quite a big space now. They've scraped it off. I've just been over to Brookhouse, which is just behind them trees, to look for some paving flags because we are a little bit short. I'll show you. Yeah, we're sort of four flags short. The tank's got to sit so many mil away from the hedge. The hedge still needs a bit more cutting, actually. You need to take the hedge right back to there. And the tank will fit the wire that way. Sorry, cable that way into the boiler. So we're just scraping off now that way. Put some to ram down and stone it up. We'll leave that hedge in there and train it back to a bushy one. It's starting to look bigger already, the garden. You can see sort of old bricks there and, and slates. And obviously this hasn't got slates, this house. And according to some research that my dad's friends done, there used to be two houses on this yard somewhere around here. So I just wonder whether that's maybe where one of them stood. So that's not been built completely on the footprint. There's also a well. Somewhere behind the low loader. So maybe we'll try and find that one day. Then we've got plenty of hardcore to take and put through Nick's crusher. Okay, so it might be wet. But this land is really dry and bills absolutely flying with this blood harvester. It's obviously got some wheels underneath it as well. Just, just hoovering them up. That's the nice thing about soil that doesn't have any clay content. And it's sandy. You can just sort of go in any conditions. Anyway, I've got a letter that's been delivered to me instead of Bill, so I'm just going to give it to Bill now. That harvest, you can, you can, the top of the trailer now, but you can actually unload spuds on the move as you're travelling down the field. But I think it's just topping it stationary so that it doesn't, doesn't spill any. Take some chips out of that load, couldn't you? Okay. 
on the officer now we're going through a wet patch it's just still hoovering it up it's unbelievable isn't it them wheels are just something else under aren't they I know, yeah, the tractor, the tractor didn't even sink though, did it really? What, what are we doing? 4.1k? You were doing 4.8 before, weren't you? Yeah, you just Oh, yeah, here we go. One thing Bill's just told me is once you empty, if that tractor stops, you have to shut the back window because that could throw all of the soil into the back of the tractor, especially if we get some tops wrapped around it. Yeah, they're still moving. Bit of a soft spot there though. It's land drive though, isn't it? The harvester, so it's just, just pulled itself through. It's good to see someone being able to get on with some field work despite the awful rain we've had, but some of these, this land of bills right on the shore is just pure sand, well drained as well, looks after his drain, so it's easy it can keep going. Anyway, go back to Wellbrook, see how they've got on stripping the garden off. Here's a quiz question for you. What are them? If you think you know, let me know in the comments below. Once they've dug them, they're going up the spud grader and then over a long elevator into the store. I'll show you actually. There's the bales of rape straw that we brought up the other week. Well, I picked out for them to insulate the shed a bit. This is like a temporary store. Just a few numbers for you. They're, at the moment, they're probably digging around 30 tonne an hour, which is just over an acre an hour. And then, the no more than that, I think. That will equate to 1,200 bags of spuds, or the little five kilo packs that you probably buy. 6,000 of them an hour. So the fur moving. Missed him, he's just put the digger back on now. It's all scraped off, but we need to, I think we're going to go that way a little bit as well so you can kind of back and turn and then come out it's definitely been some sort of old house here because they're like big sandstone blocks and then obviously some sort of bricks there as well and an old path actually isn't it that path's a lot lower than that path well that looks like it's a drain actually as well yeah so we'll have to Put a new lid on that maybe do that get some some to ram down and stone it up house looks bigger now somehow need to paint, paint the windows as well and i think that concrete around the outside i think we're going to paint it someone said maybe clad it but i don't know i think we'll paint it and paint the windows and see what it looks like going to do the birthday bumper quickly before it gets dark. Quite a lot today. It's gone up by £190 since yesterday. Oh, so £189. Harper tags on there. Ian Skidmore, Carl and Jen Cosson. I think they just left a donation because they don't think it was their birthday. Martin Tyrrell, Jeremy Longstaff, Jack Cuthbert is 10. Wendy Wilson, forgot you yesterday. Sorry, Wendy. I didn't realise until I went in the office and saw you'd left us some biscuits, but it's Wendy's birthday. Chris Nichols, sorry, the log man from Saddleworth. I missed you out on Sunday. I'll blame Martin for that. Michelle Redgrave, 56. George McRitchie is 10. James Hudson's on there. Andy Shepherd and Ralph Roding, I think it's pronounced, is 23. So happy birthday, everyone, on today's birthday bumper and anyone else whose birthday is today that's not on there. Looks like James is doing a yard inspection. Have you got your wellies on, James? Can actually put them on himself now. Can you tell that Charlotte's due date is next Wednesday? <laughs> That's one of the old style coats. There is some new style ones on the website as well as the hats. Um, you have to be quick with the hats because they've sold out really quick. Barley piles definitely getting a bit less. There's another couple of loads been out today. Some more tomorrow. And I'm hoping there'll be a couple of loads left in the back of the shed, which will be good. The price isn't very good though. The cracking sunset. 
It's got a couple of bales. Bill's coming up for some more for around his spud store. I forgot to show you before, we had the uh, 1455 on a grain trailer before. I mean, how many years are between them tractors? 40 years nearly. It's the look smart though, doesn't it? There he is on the old 7530. Just tip him in now. I think he only needs seven, so hopefully I can get a couple in the bottom, front and back, and then some on top. This wind of these clean, doesn't it? It's the outside as well. That should keep him busy. I'm just gonna move this one I've dropped now onto that pile there. That's what we've been blending with the chip to get rid of it. That's probably about all for today anyway. So thanks for watching. If you made it this far, click like, that's amazing. And don't forget you can subscribe by pressing the subscribe button and the notification button. It doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. Did you know that? Anyway, thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.